and welcome to today's live IELTS class. My name is Adrian and I am broadcasting to you live from beautiful Budapest. Hi, Jocelyn. Hi, Kyber. Hi, Anatoly. And hello, Hong. Good to see so many students in the class right at the beginning. All right, everyone. Again, today we are looking at IELTS speaking part two, the cue card. This is the second part of your speaking exam. Many students find this the most challenging. Hi, Harminder. Hi, AJ. Uh, the materials, students, they come from our websites, uh, aehelp.com for the academic version of the IELTS exam. And for the general version, check us out at G-I-E-L-T-S uh, help.com. On both of those websites, you can use the code LIVE20, L-I-V-E 20, uh, to get a 20% discount from our premium courses. This is the academic uh, version of the website with the blue background, click that big red button, use that code. And this is the uh, general version, uh, click that big red button and use the code there. Hi Alexander, hi Bagzod. Uh, you are both very studious to be in the previous class and this one as well, good for you. Uh, all right, as you uh, may realize students, we have our uh, IELTS hero here in a new pose, cracking the IELTS exam. This is part of our new merchandise. I'm wearing the shirt as well. You can kind of see it. Um, and uh, you can get that merchandise on our YouTube channel. So uh, thank you, Juan Pablo, uh, for that feedback. Um, all right, if anybody has questions about our products, our services, the exam, we are here to help you. Our goal is for students around the world to succeed on the IELTS, improve communication, improve English, get into university, get a master's, doctorate degrees, move to other countries and live a great life. Uh, if you have questions, send them to Adrian, A-D-R-I-A-N, at aehelp.com. This week, uh, we have uh, six days of classes from today all the way to Saturday, uh, Central European time, 13.30 to 14.30 members chat classes, followed by all chat classes, 15 to 16 o'clock. Uh, tomorrow will be task two and listening. Uh, today, this class again, speaking part two. Hi, Patricio. Good to see you in class. All right, uh, speaking, part two, cue card. Let's get into it. Any questions about part two speaking? Uh, let me start off by uh, handing uh, over the opportunity to ask me questions about this speaking part two. Anybody have questions about speaking part two before we get right into our cue card example here? Something you're not sure about? maybe a tip or a trick that you heard from a teacher, you're wondering, does it really work? Doesn't it work? Um, what do I need to do to get a band seven? What do I have to pay attention to? All right, Begzod, uh, good question. Begzod says, how do I prepare for this at home alone? Um, Begzod, it's tough. Preparing for, list, uh, or for speaking is, uh, alone is tough, but you can. Uh, you need to definitely use the recorder option on your uh, phone. Uh, record your part two responses. Pay attention to the time. Listen back to your answers, Begzod, uh, after you record them. Write them down. Check for mistakes in grammar, word use. Re-record them. Okay, so a lot of this record, check, feedback, re-record. That's very important for practicing this alone at home. Uh, Ram Dugampudi says, what if I get stuck uh, during the middle, like uh, one minute or 50 seconds into the speaking? Um, that is a good question, okay? Uh, Ram, remember, uh, you write notes in the one minute and you have the card with the questions in front of you. So when you get stuck, Ram, the most important is look at your notes, 
Look at the card, okay? Oftentimes, students miss information from their notes and miss information from the questions on the card. So if you look at it carefully, don't panic. Take five or 10 seconds, look carefully, and then start speaking about that. Now, also, Ram, think about examples. Think about how you can add information uh, to what you already said. Think about follow-up questions to the questions on the card. All of those tricks will help you if you get stuck, okay? All right, uh, so those are some good questions. Let's see if anybody has any other questions there. Uh, Sushil uh, Dital has a good question. Uh, Sushil is asking, how do I improve my grammar uh, while speaking? So uh, Sushil, that's a really good question. It's a very important question. You need to get feedback. Okay, you need to constantly get feedback. Always record your speaking, Sushil. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry if that was a bit loud. Um, always record your speaking, uh, Sushil, and then uh, write it out. Uh, check the grammar. Ask your teacher to check your grammar or use uh, Grammarly or other software to check the grammar and then re-record. But you have to improve the grammar. That's a very effective way to do it is by recording, writing it down, grammar checking with Word or Grammarly or using a teacher and then re-recording. Okay. Thank you, Tina. Uh, thank you, Begzod. All right. All right, so those were some good questions. Um, now, let's get into our example uh, for today. So here we go. Uh, this is our cue card, part two cue card. Uh, talk about the most beautiful object in your home. So imagine that uh, you just got this card. Your one minute preparation time begins now. Um, you look at the card, you read the questions, so talk about the most beautiful object in your house. You should say what it is, where you got it, where you keep it in your home and why, why is it so beautiful and what you like about it. So lots of questions there. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six questions on the card. Make sure that you pay attention to each of these. All right, so you have one minute to prepare your answer, okay? Your one minute starts now, start right away. Immediately start preparing your answer for part two. Uh, what's your step number one? What should you do? So you have this card. What is your first step? Okay. Kyber says, make a plan. Begzod says, uh, pay attention to the topic. Okay. Uh, Lavnish Kumar is deciding the item. Uh, Kyber says, think of 10 choices. That might be a bit much, Kyber. You don't have, you only have one minute. Um, Paula, that's right. So first of all, realize that it is an object. That seems very intuitive, but a lot of uh, people do not uh, think about uh, the importance of identifying that here you're speaking about an object. And when you talk about an object, there are some important points that you should consider. So absolutely, Paula, you're right. Um, step number one is realize that you're talking about an object. Uh, so when you talk about an object, what should you include? This is an object, so you should include its appearance, that's right, its function. Appearance here is very important. You're talking about the most beautiful object in your uh, home. You should talk about its function. Um, what else? Let's see. Um, yeah, Paula, the feeling that people get from it, that's kind of its function as well. So just lean purpose, function, there's synonyms. Uh, Kyber says it's origin three times over. Roshni agrees. You're right. Yeah, where you got it. So it's origin. Okay. 
So you should talk about its appearance, its function, its origin, and uh, Amarjeet, you're right, its importance. Tina, that's right. Yeah, its importance to you. Right. So uh, let's say it's a mobile phone. I know a lot of students choose that for answers. So your smartphone, you talk about its appearance. It's got a rectangular shape, um, a dark screen when turned off, a bright screen when turned on. It's thin, weighs approximately 200 grams. Uh, it, where you got it, I got it at a uh, mobile phone shop uh, in a shopping center. It's function. It allows me to communicate with people. Uh, it uh, keeps me entertained with video and music and games. And then it's importance to you. It's very important to me because I can stay in touch with my friends and family as well as uh, look at photos and videos that make me laugh. So that's kind of the idea, okay? Um, the value Huang is connected to the importance. So that was just a very quick example of thinking of these elements. Uh, and going back to Ram's question, if I get stuck, what should I do? Um, think about that. Okay, Ram, that's another point that you can consider is, oh, I'm talking about an object. I really haven't described what it looks like, so maybe I should do a little bit there. Okay, so good. Uh, I've done that. Uh, so what's my step number two? So this is, again, very quick. It's happening in the one-minute preparation time. Uh, here's the question again. So step number one. Identify it's an object. Identify that you're talking about the most beautiful object in your house. Uh, what's your step number two? Okay, what's your step number two? Preeti says get your first sentence ready. That's going to be your last step, Preeti, in your preparation time is getting that sentence ready. Yeah, I wouldn't choose uh, Love Nisha mobile phone for this one. That was just a quick example, uh, a side note when you're talking about objects. Uh, Roshni says choose the object. Yeah, um, and not choose the object, but think about a few different objects. Okay, this again is a very good example of where you need to choose two, three objects. Huang, you're right. Okay, so Huang has a very good um, suggestion here it says think about two three objects don't just think about the the most beautiful object in your home don't necessarily think about an honest answer because maybe the most beautiful object in your home is a statue or a painting that's very difficult to talk about even in your own language yet alone in another language so it might not be the best choice for the exam so you have to think about the best choice uh, for the exam. So step number two is think of two, three objects in your home, maybe even uh, some objects that are not in your home but are easy to talk about, right? So think of two, three objects in your home that are beautiful. Or aesthetically pleasing. Okay, another way to say beautiful, and choose the easiest one to talk about. Uh, not necessarily the most beautiful. Of course, you're going to sell it as the most beautiful, uh, but uh, you have to choose the easiest one. So um, what can you choose, right? Uh, Jahongir is asking why not. Um, the reason why not, Jahongir, because your goal on the IELTS is to get a high band score, not to tell the examiner the truth and actually choose an object that could be very difficult to talk about. Okay, um, so uh, we have chair. So let's get some examples that students are suggesting. A chair might be one, um, a study table. A piano, I really like that one. That's by Farouk Ahmed, a piano. It's a great choice, Farouk. Um, a trophy. Um, a sofa. A carpet being suggested by uh, a, a few people. Okay. All right. Um, 
from these ones, so I there's a good list there. Okay, a lot of you are giving me a good uh, list. Okay, um, a carpet or a uh, clock, maybe. Okay, a lamp. All right, so those are some good ones. Um, which uh, one of these? So let's say you're in your one minute. Uh, making the right choice, students, so when you have the one minute to prepare your answer, this step here, step number two, is extremely important because making the right choice can literally be a full band difference. So it can be the difference between a band 5.5 in your speaking and a band 6.5, this step number two. Is that clear why? So do you understand why I'm really emphasizing the importance of making a good choice for your part two response? I really want you to recognize this. I really want you to register that you can't just jump to a choice without having um, reason, without having logic. Uh, which one of these do you think would be the best choice? So chair, study table, piano, trophy, sofa, carpet, clock, antique lamp. Which one of these? So <clears throat> yeah, I would say that uh, piano is definitely a top choice here. What would be another really good one? So piano definitely, and I, a lot of students are agreeing that, yeah, piano is a great choice, okay? What would be another one that would be a good choice? Yeah, Ashu, I would say probably my second choice would be an antique lamp, okay? So one would be piano, and the second one uh, would be an antique lamp. Uh, why? So why is piano better than talking about a chair or talking about a clock, or definitely better than talking about a painting or a statue. So why, why is the piano, this is the important question I want you to think about. Why is the piano a good choice or a great choice compared to the other one? Um, because it has a lot of function, right? It serves, it serves a very important function. The piano is not just beautiful to look at, it also creates beautiful sound, right? So um, Ivan Nazarenko says, because there are many reasons why it's beautiful, it's very functional. So you can talk a lot about it. It's easy to talk about for two minutes. Absolutely, okay? Um, it's valuable, it's expensive. And most people, when they think of a piano, especially a grand piano, they agree that that is a beautiful object, okay? With a chair or a sofa, it's also functional, but you really have to convince your listener that it's beautiful. Because when we think of a chair or a sofa, we usually don't think of the word beautiful right away. We think functional, not necessarily beautiful. So you have to convince your listener that that's a beautiful chair or a beautiful sofa. With the piano, most people are already convinced. You just have to explain it to them, okay? And it's easier to talk about, absolutely. So let's go with piano for this class, okay? That was a very good suggestion. Uh, let's go with piano, okay? You can talk a lot about its origins, what it means to you, even if you're making it up, even if you don't actually have a piano, there's a lot of information you can make up about the piano, okay? So your final step, step three, is uh, what was suggested, I think, by Preeti. It's come up with your first sentence. Okay, uh, too many students take too long to start speaking and too many students speak about general ideas and off-topic ideas when they do start speaking. So another really important step 
to get that higher band score in your cue card and in your speaking uh, section is have a good sentence. Have a good sentence ready to go. That's right, Paula. So make sure you have your first sentence ready to go before the examiner says your one minute uh, time is up, okay? So we haven't done our planning yet, so I guess I could say this is step four, but I want to emphasize step four right now. We can go back to step three after. So have your first sentence ready, okay? Sanjeev, send me an email and I'll help you out, okay? With that question, it's off topic. Um, so have your first sentence ready. So think about your first sentence. What should be your first sentence here? So Roshni says the object that I always cannot take my eyes off of is my uh, piano. Uh, Roshni, that's okay. A more natural way to say it, Roshni, is the object that I'm always marveling at is my piano, okay? Begzod says an object that has an aesthetically pleasing value in my living room is the piano. Yeah. Now, remember, students, the original question. So when you think about your first sentence, always look at this sentence here on the card. So look at the first sentence on the card. Okay. Talk about the most beautiful object in your house. Okay. You have to include this whole part into your first sentence to make it very strong, very focused, and on your way to a band seven or higher. Okay. All of these elements should be in your first sentence. So you might want to rewrite your sentences. Okay. It's not just a beautiful object, it's the most beautiful object. Reflect that right away, okay? Uh, Kansu Aideen, that's a good sentence. Kansu says, the most beautiful object in my home is my piano. Yeah, absolutely, okay? Um, Mario Espitia, careful with the word precious. It's not quite the same as beautiful. Okay, precious means valuable. Uh, you might say, Mario, uh, the most aesthetically pleasing and precious object in my home is my grand piano. Okay. Farouk says, well, I will talk about a very specific object, which is the most beautiful in my home. It's my grand piano. Okay, again, Farouk, add in that information. So have that first sentence ready. Okay. We're going to skip the planning part there. And again, the first sentence. So the most aesthetically. Aesthetics is another way to say beauty. Um, and of course, it has different word forms. The most aesthetically pleasing item in my home has to be my grand piano. Okay, great. So there you have your first sentence. Now you're ready to go. All right, you're ready to speak. Okay, um, <clears throat> so fantastic. We're en route to a good score. Now our two minute response time starts. So uh, the examiner will say, okay, your one minute preparation time is up. Uh, please begin speaking. As soon as you hear that, start speaking, okay? Don't wait five seconds. Don't wait 10 seconds. Uh, you shouldn't still be collecting your thoughts. You're collecting your thoughts in the one minute. You're not collecting your thoughts at this point. Now you're speaking, okay? So immediately, Start by the most aesthetically pleasing item in my home has to be my grand piano without question. Okay, so immediately start with your sentence. Even if you're kind of half reading your first sentence, that's okay. All right, so I have this. What do I do next? 
There is no general line, Nandini, for starting, okay? Remember, students, the IELTS examiners do not like to hear general uh, statements to start your speaking. So they don't like to hear, thank you for this opportunity to talk about beautiful objects. They do not like to hear that. Also, they do not like to hear, there are many beautiful objects in my home, but the one I would like to talk to you about today is the grand piano. They do not like to hear that. That's what every student starts with. It's not specific. It's just memorized. They don't like those. Okay, so start with this specific statement. Uh, so Patricio says, describe it. Talk about its appearance. Yeah, Paula says, talk about what it looks like. Okay, now... A lot of you are saying that. That's fantastic. A piano is maybe a tricky object to describe a little bit. So keep it simple. If you can't explain some part of it, then don't try. Just say what you can. Okay. So describe it. Describe what it looks like. Okay. Um, so what does a piano look like? Okay. What does it look like? Give me a little bit about its description. It's the most beautiful item in your home, so you have to obviously say at least a few points about its appearance, why it looks so beautiful. So let's do that together, okay? I'm sure some of you will learn some new vocabulary here as well. Okay, so starting with the color is fine. So color, its dimensions, right? Full sentences, students. Give me some full sentences. Tina says it's a great black one, okay. Uh, Begzod says it's brown in color and has a length of about half meters and two meters in width, okay. Um, now, careful students, this is a grand piano, okay. A grand piano, as hopefully most of you have it in mind, looks kind of like this, right. So that is a grand piano, okay, where the lid opens up. I can't really draw that, but uh, anyway, that's kind of what it looks like, okay? So that's what it would look like. You'd obviously have a chair there as well. Um, so that's your grand piano. That's what a grand piano looks like, all right? Keep that image in mind. Okay, so D, uh, Tina says it has four beautiful, delicate legs. Yeah, that's nice, okay? Uh, Juan Pablo says it's made of a beautiful, high-quality, natural wood. Um, it's very heavy. That's good. Yeah, it's a very heavy musical instrument. It must weigh at least a couple hundred kilos. That's very good, okay? Excellent. All right, very good. So now we have... Um, some good descriptions. It is a very large musical instrument about two meters long and wide, and it must weigh close to a couple hundred kilograms. Okay. It is made of uh, mahogany. I don't know how to spell that, but mahogany is a really nice type of wood. Um, <clears throat> I don't know if pianos are made about that, but I can make it up. Okay, so again, keep that in mind. So yeah, it's made of really nice wood. So it's made of mahogany and has with a dark, uh, shiny finish. Okay, that's the paint, dark, shiny finish. So uh, it is a very large musical instrument, about two meters long and wide, and it must weigh close to a couple hundred kilograms. It is made of mahogany with a dark, shiny finish and stands on four uh, beautifully carved. 
carved, delicate wooden legs. Okay. Sure. Uh, fantastic. So we have some good description there. All right. Again, do the best that you can. If some words don't come to mind, don't force it. You can always add in information later. Okay. Don't jump ahead students. So let's follow together. Okay. Let's give structure to, uh, our, uh, speaking here. So again, repeat after me uh, again, students, this is a speaking class. So repeat and practice. Copy my intonation, copy my enunciation. So the most aesthetically pleasing item in my home has to be my grand piano. It is a very large musical instrument, about two meters long and wide, and it must weigh close to a couple hundred kilograms. It is made of mahogany with a dark, shiny finish, and it stands uh, on four beautifully carved, delicate wooden legs. Okay, that's fantastic. All right. Um, okay. Now, what do I do? What should I do? What makes sense? What should I add after? I don't, by the way, students, I don't play the piano. I don't own a grand piano. I'm just making this up. Guarantee you, you can do the same in the real exam. It might be easier than thinking about the actual most beautiful object in your home. Um, I wouldn't go with function yet. So I would do something before function. Yeah, Marasa says maybe talk about its origin first. Yeah, so where did you get it? Before you even talk about its function and explaining why it's so beautiful, throw in a quick sentence of where you got it. Where you got it. Okay, so give me a sentence here, students, with where did you get it? I wouldn't talk about its function yet. I wouldn't talk about, I would, I would really just give the listener an idea of where it came from. Where did I get it? Okay. So when you're thinking about your step one, um, appearance is first, origin should be second. So this is the logical order usually. So let's take origin out from here and let's add it in here. So it should go appearance, origin, function, importance. That always makes more sense. Uh, Amar says, it was gifted to me by my grandmother. It was a birthday gift. Sure, uh, those are all good as well. Um, if somebody in our family passes away, like a grandparent, and we get an item from them, what's the correct vocabulary for that? Let's see if anybody is using that. Um, so gift is okay. If a, if a grandparent or a great-grandparent passes away, oh, there it is. Paula says, I got this piano as an inheritance. Now, Paula, the word inheritance is a verb as well. So you can say, I inherited this piano from my grandfather. Sure. Um, so let's add that again. I'm teaching you vocabulary. Make sure to write it down if it's new for you. If you haven't used the verb form, Paula, then make sure to practice using the verb form. So I inherited this amazing Yamaha. So give as much uh, information as you can always. If it's a Yamaha grand piano, and you remember that, add that in, okay? I don't know too many types of pianos. I do know that Yamaha makes uh, some nice quality pianos. So I inherited this amazing Yamaha piano uh, from my grandfather after he passed away. So it not only is pleasing uh, for me to look at, but it also has a lot of value. Now, there's an adjective that I want to use here. Okay, uh, what's the missing word here, students, before value? 
It's another great piece of vocabulary. Very good, Paula. Yeah, sentimental. Absolutely. Sentimental. So remember the word sentiment, sentimental. Again, students, speaking practice, repeat after me. Sentiment, sentimental. Okay? This is the kind of vocabulary you must use to get those points for lexical resource, for vocabulary. Okay? All right. So I inherited this amazing Yamaha piano from my grandfather after he passed away. So it not only is pleasing for me to look at, but it also has a lot of sentimental value. Notice my correlative conjunction, not only, but also. Okay. Now, Begzod, that's great what you're doing. So you're showing everybody that, hey, girls and guys, you can use a lot of quantitative information as well. So approximately four years ago in summer, my father bought this musical instrument for my 16th birthday, and it cost around $20,000 at the time. It was manufactured in France uh, in around year 2000. Very good. Okay. Uh, Jocelyn, sentimental means that you have emotional connection, emotional attachment to it. Okay. All right. Enlarge this a little bit. So using quantitative information definitely adds. Um, and we could throw it into ours, begs odds. So I, I will pay tribute to your suggestion. So I inherited this amazing Yamaha piano from my grandfather after he passed away about 10 years ago. So it is not only pleasing for me to look at, but it also has a lot of sentimental value. Okay, great. What should I do now? So what's my next step? I'm doing a good job. So far, so good. I've explained what the item is. I had that first sentence ready to go. I gave some good information about its appearance so the listener can imagine this item. I explained its origin, where it came from. So what should I do next? Nandani says, why is it beautiful? Begzat says, maybe look at the questions. Look at the cue card. I think that's a good idea. Okay, so I think it's a good idea to look at the cue card at this point, glance down at it real quickly. And um, right away, you'll notice something. So if I look at the cue card at this point, I take a quick peek at it. Okay, so look at the card. Um, there's definitely a question that I should answer right now, looking at the card. So make sure always to answer every question, right? I wouldn't talk about the importance just yet. Actually, you will talk about the importance because it's connected with this question. Okay, that's why it's so important to look at these cards. Uh, Paula says number three. So I guess, Paula, you mean if this is number one, this is number two, this would be number three, right? So where you keep it in your home and why. Fantastic. So where do you keep your grand piano in your home and why? It's a very good question to answer at this point in your response, okay? So where do you keep it in your home and why? Okay, absolutely. Okay, so remember, look at the card. Students too often will miss questions So answer that one for me, students. Where do you keep your piano and why do you keep it there? So Parvinder says, uh, I keep the piano, not want to Parvinder, but you actually keep it there. So Parvinder Kaur, I keep it in the lobby of my home because when my family members are free, I use it to entertain them with some nice music. Yeah, Sana Sohail says it is placed in my living room because our living room is spacious and the other rooms are a bit congested. Yeah, so Parvinder, Sana, what you want to do is basically combine those two pieces of information uh, for the best answer, right? Grand piano needs space and it's used to entertain. So the most obvious place to keep it 
is your living room, right? So the two put together, Parvinder Sana, the two of yours put together makes for a great answer. Okay. Paula says the piano is located in the living room on the ground floor because it is not only part of the decoration, but also I can play it for my family when we are together. Paula, excellent. You're really coming along nicely and progressing. So you're realizing that, hey, wait a second. This is a really good opportunity for another correlative conjunction, another joint conjunction, right? Uh, Paula, try using other ones like weather or, all right? Um, <clears throat> Nimish, I keep it in the center of my hall because it increases the beauty of this space and everybody can gather around to listen to music. Nimish, that's great. So you're thinking of the same two key reasons. That's fantastic. So <clears throat> uh, I keep my piano in my living room. both because there is space for it there and I can use it to entertain family and guests on special occasions. Okay, absolutely, all right. That is a great answer. So I keep my piano in my living room, both because there is space for it there and I can use it to entertain family and guests on special occasions. Fantastic. Now you can go into function, right? So now we want to talk about its purpose. What is it used for? And we can combine that with beauty. Okay. I can add one more sentence here. I guess it's sort of the center piece to the decorations in my house. Okay. Uh, center piece actually might be one word. Let's try it. Yeah. So center piece is actually one word. Uh, center piece means that it's the focus. It's the uh, center piece, what it actually sounds as. So it is uh, the of the highest importance as one word, centerpiece. Okay. Uh, if that's new, write it down. All right. Uh, Begzod, you must have a big room, but that works as long as you can explain it. So I place my beautiful piano in my own room, not only because I don't want to interrupt my siblings while they're working, but also my room has a lot of space where I can enjoy playing it without distractions. Very good, Begzod. That works. And you have a good explanation there. Okay. Fantastic. All right. So far, so good. Now we want to talk about the importance. So go ahead, uh, students. Um, explain why this item is so beautiful for you and why is it so important? while I take a sip of my coffee from, again, you can get coffee mugs. You can kind of see it with our new IELTS Hero, as you see on my shirt here, uh, cracking the I-E-L-T-S words or acronym. You can get these in our merchandise on our YouTube channel. It's a new thing. It's a little quick pitch for everyone there. Obviously, the shape of the piano makes it an eye-catching object for guests. Paula, Yep, that works. Keep thinking. So it's importance. Why is it important? Uh, so it's unique shape is very eye catching. Sure. Yes, but you the mug. The mug of cracking the aisles. That's right. All right, let's get back on to, into focus here. And again, in part two, make sure to really stay focused, okay, throughout the whole speaking. So, yeah, music is one part, right? So the piano can be used to create beautiful music. So, again, you can use another correlative conjunction. Um, I would probably... Do it like this. Okay. 
So uh, try to let's play a little bit of fill in the blanks here. So I'm going to use the correlative conjunction whether or in this case. So whether people are something or something, they will, they are always truly impressed by its beauty. Okay, what are the missing words? So which, which words have I omitted here? Could be more than two words. Yeah, so uh, Sushil, Vital, you're right on mark. So whether people are... Observing its unique shape. Or listening to its crystal clear sound. They are always truly impressed by its beauty. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, that works well. So whether people are observing its unique shape or listening to its crystal clear sound, they are always truly impressed by its beauty. Yeah, definitely. So you can look at it, you can listen to it, right? Now, uh, again, I'm not uh, a very musical person, but I can make up information. So clearly, if I have a grand piano, I probably play the grand piano as well. Uh, so here I can add, since I have been learning the piano from age five, I spend at least uh, five or four to eight hours each week practicing old songs and learning new ones, okay? So I can get into why it's important for me. Don't forget, you probably play the piano. So when you play the piano, it adds more importance, right? Don't forget about that part. It would be really strange to talk for two minutes about the piano and it's the most beautiful object in your home and not actually say that you play the piano and you enjoy playing it, okay? All right, so we have quite a bit of information. We've been talking for at least 90 seconds. Uh, now, before we finish, what should we do? Okay, so what should we do? So we're talking for about 80, 90 seconds. The examiner might stop us at any time. So at any point now, they might say, uh, your time is up. They don't have to give you the full two minutes because it's one to two minutes. At any point, they might say, your time is up. Let's go to part three. So what should you do? Uh, Tina says, look at the card. Nimish says, conclude. Yeah, do both of those, okay? So check your notes, check the card, get ready to conclude, okay? So you look at the card very quickly, carefully. Make sure you didn't miss any points. So what is it? Good. Where you got it? Good. Where you keep it in your home? Why? Good. Why is it so beautiful? Yep, definitely. What you like about it, okay? You kind of answered that as well. So you're doing a good job, let's finish. Let's wrap it up and conclude, okay? So what would be a good way to conclude at this point? Okay, what can you say? What would be a nice conclusion to what we have uh, explained and expressed so far? Okay, so think of a good conclusion. Pachu says it produces amazing sound, therefore 
Uh, I won a piano competition in school. Pachu, I think that is a little bit off topic. Um, for the conclusion, students, always remember back to the first question. Talk about the most beautiful object in your home. Think about this for your conclusion, okay? So for your first and your last sentence, you need to focus on this part of the question. It's very important, okay? So for your first and last sentence. Uh, Roshni, I don't think using to sum up is good. In this case, it's not bad, but it's not. It's too mechanical. It's too robotic, okay? That's good for task one academic writing, Roshni. Don't use to sum up for part two speaking. It's, it's awkward, okay? So Parveen says, uh, the piano is a source of entertainment and visual beauty. So I, there's no way I will ever sell it or it will ever, ever be replaced. Sure, okay. Sana says, uh, it's of great value to me, therefore I will keep it safe in my home and uh, perhaps give it to my children later on. Yes, yeah, Sana, that's exactly what I was thinking of. So as you got it from your grandfather in an inheritance, you hope to pass it on to your children or your grandchildren, and perhaps it will continue to be a beautiful uh, instrument in their home as well. Absolutely. That is a good uh, conclusion. So keep staying visual, right? So a good conclusion would be to pass it on to children. Yeah. Um, hopefully my piano will be around for many years to come and I plan to eventually pass it on to my children or grandchildren so they too can display it as a most beautiful object in their home and enjoy its Magnificent sound. Okay. So yeah, that would be a nice way to conclude. That makes it very clear for your listener that you've uh, wrapped up what you are saying. Okay. All right, students. Uh, together, let's go through this. Band 9, Part 2 response. Okay. Step 1 in your preparation time. Identify whether it's an object, person, place, event, or an idea. Each of these five have very specific categories to talk about clearly, okay? With objects, you talk about its appearance, its origin, its function, its importance. Then, when you're planning, remember to have your first sentence specific and ready to go as soon as the examiner says your one-minute preparation time is up. For this question, again, the original question is, talk about the most beautiful object in your house, what it is, where you got it, where you keep it in your home, and why, why is it so beautiful, and what you like about it. Here we go. Repeat after me, students. Please repeat after me. Nice and loud. Here we go. The most aesthetically pleasing item in my home has to be my grand piano. It is a very large musical instrument, about two meters long and wide, and it must weigh close to a couple hundred kilograms. It is made of mahogany with a dark, shiny finish, and it stands on four beautifully carved, delicate wooden legs. I inherited this amazing Yamaha piano from my grandfather after he passed away about 10 years ago. So it not only is pleasing for me to look at, but it also has a lot of sentimental value. Okay, I'm looking at the card. I keep my piano in my living room, both because there's space for it there and I can use it to entertain family and guests on special occasions. I guess it's sort of the centerpiece to decorate my home. 
Whether people are observing its unique shape or listening to its crystal clear sound, they are always truly impressed by its beauty. Since I have been learning the piano from age five, I spend at least four to eight hours each week practicing old songs or learning new ones. Hopefully, my piano will be around for many years to come and I plan to eventually pass it on to my children or grandchildren so they too can display it as the most beautiful object in their home and enjoy its magnificent sound. Okay, students, that is a band nine part two cue card response to this question. Again, practice at home. Practice makes perfect. That is it for today. Tomorrow, we have a members uh, chat class coming up at 1330 Central European time. That will be a task to essay question. Uh, followed by a listening class where everybody can chat. I really hope that uh, all of you learned some useful information that you can apply in your studies and to get those high band scores. Again, remember, you can get merchandise from our YouTube channel now with some cool graphics for cracking the IELTS exam. Uh, we are setting up a charity where half of the profits that we make from uh, merchandise will go to helping students around the, the world who are less fortunate pay for their expensive IELTS test. Um, if uh, you need some of the best materials in the world to help you get ready for the exam, do check out our websites, aehelp.com for academic IELTS, gieltshelp.com for general. Uh, use the code LIVE20. For a 20% discount. So LIV20, get a 20% discount from our premium package on our websites. They look like this for general. Click that red button there for academic. Click that red button there. And again, use that code LIV20, LIV20 for a 20% discount. Uh, thank you so much, everyone, for tuning in. Uh, be sure to tune in tomorrow as well. And... Uh, have a great night's rest if it's late in your country. Much love to all of you. Bye for now.